other water molecules. Let's say you have some sugar or some salt dissolving in the water. The water is more attracted to that sugar or the salt than to the other water molecules. So it disrupts these intermolecular forces here, um, in particular the hydrogen bonds are what we're talking about here. And so it makes the water molecules less likely to move. So it decreases their potential to do work. And so when we decrease their potential, we're going to start abbreviating that like this. When they decrease their potential to do work, okay, it makes it more negative. So when we add solutes, okay, that becomes a negative situation when it's not pure water. If I add sugar, if I had salt, whatever the molarity of my solution is, and we'll talk very briefly about molarity in just a second. Okay, but whatever the molarity of my solution is, that's going to um, have a negative impact on its ability to do work. Okay, so very, very briefly, for those of you that have not seen this yet, which would definitely be your sophomores here, okay, um, we do need to talk very, at least very briefly about molarity. First of all, um, Ms. Wallace wanted me to let you know that molarity is represented by a capital M. Okay? Moles, lowercase m, o l, meters, lowercase m, molarity, big fat capital M. So I'm here to really emphasize that. Okay, so basically all molarity is is um, a measure of concentration, okay? and it's um, it's our essentially grams per liters. Okay, um, it is important that you realize that it's over liters. Okay, so it's over liters. When I make all those solutions for you in the osmosis one, those are, um, remember it was like 0.2 molar and 0.4 molar and 0.6 and 0.8 and 1 molar. Okay, and so that was based on the amount of sugar essentially that was dissolved in per 1 liter of solution. Okay, so as it, um, grams or moles per liter. So again, we talk about molarity. Again, it's just essentially a consistent measurement of concentration. Okay, so let's look at the equation for water potential. Remember I told you water potential is represented by the Greek letter psi. Okay, so water potential equals the solute potential plus the pressure potential. Okay, so this is my water potential. This is my solute potential, and this is my pressure potential. Okay, so water potential is my solute potential. That we said is usually going to be negative. It's going to be negative because it's going to disrupt water's ability to move. And then my pressure potential, which could be uh, positive. Okay, so a solute potential, like I said, is going to be... Uh, directly proportional to, to molarity. Uh, it's sometimes called osmotic potential. So if you ever see a, a word problem or description where it says osmotic potential, that's the same thing. Okay? Um, and like I said, it is directly related to that molarity. Okay? Directly proportional to that molarity. Um, for pure water, solute potential equals zero for pure water. That means there are no solutes in there, so that water is ready to move. Okay, pressure potential. Okay, so your pressure potential can be positive or negative. Okay, it is relative to atmospheric pressure. So, like I said, it could be positive or negative, not just negative like your solute potential. Um, in the non-living cells, that the, the xylem that the water travels up, okay, those are non-living cells. And so the water potential there is a tension. Okay, it's um, less than 2 megapascals. Okay, but in a living cell, that's usually under a positive pressure, like I said before, because of all the water that is uh, being taken into it. Uh, so let's take a look at a couple pictures, a couple scenarios, and then we're going to hit this harder in class. We're going to do some more example. We're going to do some example problems in class and really walk through this equation in class. Okay, so I have four <coughs> YouTube apparatus scenarios here. Okay, and we're going to look at each one individually. So I'm just going to kind of shoot these over to the side because we're going to focus on this first one right here. 
Okay, so in this first one here, okay, I've, what I have happening here is I've added solutes to one side of the U-tube. Okay, so by adding solutes to one side of the U-tube, okay, that is going to have a negative effect, right? Adding solutes is going to make this more negative. It's going to make my solute um, potential more negative because the solute is able to dissolve in the water. It disrupts the intermolecular forces, so there's less, quote-unquote, free water. So that reduces the water's capacity to move, and so that's a negative effect. Um, just so you know, this is a very common one, 0.1 molar sugar. Okay, 0.1 molar sugar has a solute uh, potential of negative 0.23 megapascals. Okay, so as the solute concentration or molarity increases, the negative value of the um, solute potential will also increase. So in this case here, if I'm going to put solute on, if I'm going to put solute on the right side over here, that makes the right side more negative because I don't have pressure isn't a factor here, right? Remember, this is my whole equation. Right, and so pressure is equal to zero because it's an open container. Okay, so now I've got plus zero. So really my only factor here is my solute potential. So as soon as I add those solutes, I make this more negative. Okay, so if this side over here becomes more negative, okay, that means it's going to be lower. And remember, water moves from high to low. So water's actually going to move due to osmosis, okay? <coughs> but it is going to move from a high water potential to a low water potential. Okay, so let's look at this second scenario here, okay? This is the one we just did. Okay, so looking at this second scenario here, let's look at the effect of pressure. So in the second scenario, we've added a positive pressure. So again, here's my equation. But in this instance, my solute potential okay, stays at zero. I didn't add any solutes. So here, my concern then is what is the pressure going to do to this situation? Okay, well, I've put a mechanical pressure on the right side of the tube. Okay, so it's a positive pressure. Essentially, it's a pressure pushing down on the water. So I have increased my pressure potential on the right side here. So when I've increased my pressure potential, okay, I've made my pressure potential over here more positive, okay, and again, water's going to flow from high to low. Okay, so it's going to move to the left side here. So in my third scenario here, I've added solutes to the right side of the tube as well as a mechanical pressure to the right side of the tube. Okay, so I've got a positive pressure as well as adding solutes. Well, if we look at our equation, when I add solutes, I make this more negative, right? When I'm adding this positive pressure here, okay, and hopefully you realize with positives and negatives, that these may actually cancel each other out. These can actually, this situation here, can end up balancing your water potential because you've got a negative solute potential and a positive pressure potential. Um, so they can have opposing effects on one another. In this instance right here, okay, the water is, the water does not, there's no net movement of water here because the positive pressure and the solute potential have canceled each other out. This is very similar to the inside of the plant cell. That just is a big mess. Okay. So again, this is very similar to a plant cell, to the inside of the plant cell, because you're gonna have solutes inside of the plant cell, okay, but you definitely also have that positive pressure happening as well inside of the plant cell. Okay, so the fourth scenario we have here is a negative pressure, okay? So essentially a tension 
on the right side of the tube this time. And so when I've got a tension on the right side of the tube, now I've actually made my pressure potential more negative. Okay. So I've made this one more negative here. And so this is what's happening during transpiration. Okay. There is a negative pressure or a tension pressure building up. So it makes my pressure potential more negative. Okay. The water potential of air, okay. so the water potential of air is approximately negative 65 megapascals. Okay. And so remember water moves from a higher water potential to a lower or a more negative water potential. Right. So if the water potential of the air so this is the water potential of the air outside of the plant. It's a negative 65 megapascals. That is probably more negative than the inside of the plant. And so the water, that's lower, the water potential, the water is going to move from the higher water potential to the lower. Or it's going to move towards the more negative situation. So the water will actually help, it will help the water move up the plant. That's how transpiration is going to work. Same with here, the water is going to move up the tube. On that note, one of the things we um, did not look at on the last video when we talked about transpiration is how the stomata can affect the rate of transpiration. We've talked about them, we talked about them being open versus closed and how that helps conserve water, but we didn't look at really exactly how they work. And so if we look at how they work, okay, when there is plenty of water available, water will move into the guard cells. And it's going to do that basically because it's chasing potassium. We'll look at a picture of that in just a second. But the water is going to move into the guard cells. So water going into these guard cells. And if you notice how these guard cells are shaped, they're kind of um, kidney bean shaped. And so as water moves into the cell, okay, it makes them more turgid. It increases their turgor pressure, and so it makes them tur more turgid. Remember that's when the cell, the plant cell is full of water and kind of there's a lot of pressure inside of it and so because of their shape remember uh, form and function go hand in hand in living things because of their shape that actually causes them to bow out even more okay so they bow out even more leaving leaving this open hole there the stomata there so it increases the opening of the stomata so when there's not enough water available, you'll see those guard cells actually lose water and close up the stomata. So you can see here in this case, the guard cells are closed, okay, because, sorry, because the water has, flown, has um, flowed out of the guard cell. So, and so the result there, when the cell doesn't have enough water, the cell becomes flaccid, or right? that's what wilting is in a plant. So as the cell becomes flaccid, again due to their shape, they lose that bowing kidney shape. And so they flatten out. As you can see here when they flatten out, and so you'll see there your stomata opening is smaller. So there's less bowing, and so the stomata closes. And like I said before, potassium is what's going to really influence this. And so potassium is able to move in and out of the cell. Um, so when the cell... Okay, when there is, when potassium, the red dots are your potassium, so as the potassium is going into the cell, well, water is going to follow it, right, because of um, water potential here. Okay, when I've got a whole bunch of solutes inside of the cell now, so I have all those solutes inside of the cell, the cell becomes more negative because of the solutes inside of the cell, so water will move into the cell. The cell has a lower water potential, and so water follows that potassium inside of the cell. The cell becomes turgid, opens up the stomata. Okay. <coughs> then when the potassium leaves, so all this potassium leaves, well now okay, I've got more solutes in the surrounding cells, and so their water potential becomes more negative, and so the water will leave the cell, closing the stomata there. Okay. So... We're going to be um, working with water potential in class, practicing the equation, really getting the hang of the math behind it, okay? and then we'll be wrapping up plants.